Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Lojak, and this is Into the Weekend with BetDSI, the call we do every Thursday with Brent, the headlines manager at BetDSI, where uh, Brent tells us a little bit about some of the action that he's got so far on the upcoming slate of football games and what possible action he might be expecting. Brent, thanks for being here once again. Good to be back on, Peter. All right, so let's start off with college football, okay? I want to ask you about it. There's a bunch of games um, that everyone's talking about, everyone's discussing. Let's start with USC at Stanford. Now, USC is what? They're about an eight, nine-point favorite, seven-and-a-half-point favorites. What are you getting? You're obviously getting public action on USC. Are the Sharps biting at all? Yeah, no. Anytime it gets – I mean, right now the line's nine. Anytime it hits nine-and-a-half, which is interesting, I mean, nine, nine-and-a-half, we've got sharp money on the plus nine on Stanford. Mm. Uh, right now, we've probably got a count of about five to one in favor of UFC, but because so much of that is public money, our, our money action is actually quite balanced. So we're getting lots of public money on UFC, which you would figure is the norm, and sharp money on Stanford. So right now, I mean, if we sit at nine and we keep getting USC money, we're going to be okay with that and let that run away. So it's actually not going to be a decision game for you then? It, it likely will be. People are going to keep betting on USC. Like I said, right now the money's pretty good, but because the count is five to one in favor of USC, I expect that trend to continue, and we will need Stanford. Man, so so the so the sharps are on Stanford, but the public's on USC. I'm going to be on USC yeah. too. I, I I know the sharps are on Stanford, so why don't I go on Stanford? I don't know. I'm going to be on USC. Because you're square. <laughs> but sometimes but the public is a, right. That was a question, not a statement, Peter. Okay, and then similar game, Virginia Tech at Pitt. Got to be the same thing. Sharps got to be on Pitt, right? Yeah. Now, right now, we're at 10 with Virginia Tech. We had a little bit of sharp money at 9.5, but it's been at 10 for the most part. As soon as the line went to 10.5 and, and 11, we had sharp money taking back on Pittsburgh. So that is, yeah, you're exactly right. That's another case where we've got sharp money on Pittsburgh and public money on Virginia Tech. It's, that's actually been a really good game for us in terms of volume. We've got just a ton of volume on that game. Hmm. And it's nice. I mean, if we, can, we can sit at 10, and I think we'll be fine until Saturday. Right, right. So the games where you really get burned is when the Sharps and the public wind up on the same side, which did actually happen a lot last year, right? Yeah, and a case like that actually is uh, Boise State this weekend. Uh, we had Sharp money minus 18.5 on Boise State, and the public's kind of been following them. That lines up to 21 right now. So far, we've got nothing back on Miami, Ohio. So if Boise State wow. wins that game by more than 21, it'll be a bad result for us. Right, right. And Boise State was one of the teams where you saw that a lot last year as well, you know? Yeah. And then the other one was uh, Alabama. You saw that a lot last year. Now, this game, Alabama at Arkansas. Alabama's a 20-point road favorite. I'm wondering how much action you're getting on this at all. I mean, is the public actually betting this game either way? We're getting, actually, this is another game. We're getting a, a lot of action, Peter. Um, I've got, surprisingly, I've got some really sharp money on Alabama minus 20. Now, really? we're still minus 20, but uh, we had a lot of money come back on Arkansas plus 21, 20 and a half. So as soon as it went above 20, we had money coming back on Arkansas. And it's kind of the case where sharps are on both sides right, of it. Sometimes right. maybe they might just be playing the number with Arkansas. But a, a couple of the guys who I respect a lot laid the 20 with Alabama. Right. So it's similar to the USC Stanford game. You've got sharps on both sides. The sharps that you've taken money from are on Stanford, and I'm on USC. So you've got like sharps on both on both sides. Uh, the sharp on USC was was you. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, I just want to clarify that, Peter. Yeah, that was me. The twenty dollar bet you took on Tuesday on USC was, that was my account. All right. And then what about uh, what about Florida Tennessee? That's a very uh, heavily debated game. I don't know how much action you're getting, but uh, a lot of people are saying Tennessee is going to be a great bet here. But the, the count's been good. Um, we've had about 3-1 action in terms of, of dollar volume on Tennessee. Like I said, the count, we've probably our wagers are probably about even there. Now, they've been laying minus 1 to minus 3, uh, minus three and they're, they're still betting Tennessee. So we're in a risky position there. We're going to need Florida to come through. And because we took action minus 1, you really don't want to go above 3. Right, and I would guess that the Sharps, have there, has there been any Sharp action on that? If there was, I, I would guess it would be on Tennessee. Yeah, and the only action we got really on Sharp was at the minus one. Right. Um, anything since minus one has been mostly public money. Right, right. Okay, and then uh, and then finally, North uh, uh, Notre Dame and at Michigan State. Now, uh, this is a. I'm assuming that's going to be a very heavily bet game, right? Yeah, we've got in, we've got about three to one in terms of the the action, the number of bets we've taken in in terms of. Just the betting volume has been on Michigan State. The dollar volume is actually pretty balanced on both sides. The the money on Michigan State though came mostly three, four, four and a half, and the money on Notre Dame we actually got back at four and, and plus six. We had to go as high as that. But uh, that's a heavily bet game, and a lot of public people are on Michigan State there. And then uh, before we move on to NFL, what else can you tell me about uh, college football? Any any sides that have caught your eye as being particularly sharp, particularly high volume, particularly public favored? 
Uh, big public favorite is, is UCLA. Um, we're going to need Houston there. And the good thing is they've been laying like the 16 and a half and 17 with UCLA, so we're taking a lot of, of, of bets on UCLA. But as soon as that line touches 17 and a half or 18, sharps come back on Houston. So we're going to need Houston, and I think we're going to have a pretty decent decision there. People are just going to keep laying the, the 17 with UCLA. At least the public will, I believe. All right. um, we touched on already that, that USC is a public side for us. Uh, your bet aside from that. Um, <laughs> Ohio State is actually a heavily bet public side, and we've got sharp money on California. The line's still 16.5 because the public just keeps on laying it, but the sharps are taking the 16.5 with California. So we'll probably be in a good position there in terms of needing the dog and needing the sharps to win. All right. Okay, great, great. Now let's move on to uh, NFL. And I'm looking over this NFL card, and it looks to me like there's a lot of, uh, of uh, lines that would be very tempting to the public. And when I say that, I mean like sort of like small road favorites who, you know, did very well in week one that might be, you know, tempting to the public to like pound over and uh, just putting too much emphasis in what happened in week one. Obviously, the Redskins is, uh, is one of those uh, situations. You're getting a lot of action on the Redskins game. Yeah, tons of public money on Washington there. Right. And it's interesting, the count is probably 10 to 1 in favor of Washington, but the money's only about 2 to 1 in their favor. So we've had slight short money come back on St. Louis, but it's really been you know, just a couple of big bets to drown out a whole bunch of small bets on Washington. Um, the public is all over them. And again, you know, the, the hype with RG3, yeah. you, you know, look like it's, it's pretty well founded because he was fantastic last weekend. And St. Louis just isn't team, a team that you, know, you want to fall in love with. Right. So, so is it possible that the public is right here and that, uh, you know, that uh, in, in, in retrospect, the bookies will look back at this game and say the line should have been much higher than two and a half? Yeah, I mean, right now it's all the way up to like three minus a quarter. And if that game touches three and a half, I'm sure you'll see sharp money on St. Louis. Okay. But uh, it's going to take, uh, take a lot of convincing to get off the number three. Right. Again, we'll probably just let the public go with Washington. Um, same thing, New Orleans. We're going to need uh, yeah. we're going to need Carolina there at home, and uh, another heavily bet game, of course, is New England. Now, public is always over New England. They're laying the thirteen and a half. It's small, sharp money on Arizona when it touched fourteen, but we're sitting at thirteen and a half. But the count is is all New England. The money's all New England, and that's probably going to be like that, you know, all season long. Um, I don't know if you watched that game, but New England their their defense looks better than it ever has. Yeah. It looked like they have a running game finally. The receivers, you know, with Lloyd, probably better than ever. So we're getting a ton of action on New England, and we're going to hold our breath and hope for Arizona to come through and cover. How about Jets Pitt? Obviously, the Jets offense shocked everyone in Week One. Now they're going into Pittsburgh. They're a five point road underdog. I'm curious. I, I can't. I don't think I can predict what kind of action you've seen on it so far. It's actually been really, really uh, even on both sides. Um, mm -hmm. I think people are, you know, were so down on the Jets after their terrible preseason. And Pittsburgh, obviously, you have a lot of respect for. But the number just seems right. I don't think yeah. we'll, we'll go off five. It may dip to four and a half. But I think four and a half and five is going to be a solid number there. And we've got a lot of action on that game evenly split between the two, Peter. All right. The Monday night game, Peyton Manning, of course, playing his second game. He won and covered the first game. Now he's an underdog on Monday night. Is that something that the public just loves? Well, the public does like Denver here. Um, the, the count in terms of the number of wagers we take is about 2-1 to one in favor of Denver. The dollar volume is actually about 2-1 to one the other way. So we're probably going to you know, be sitting on the number 3 minus 20 where it is right now, and we'll get good two-way action on that game, Peter. All right, and then before we let you go, uh, just looking over the NFL card, what, uh, what game result would be uh, a disaster or near disaster scenario for you? Well, it's interesting that, uh, you know, the Dallas game is really kind of running away in terms of the count. A lot of people are laying the, the 3 minus uh, 15, minus 20. We're up to 3 minus a quarter now on Dallas. They're on the road at Seattle, and the money is probably about 5 to 1 in terms of, uh, of Dallas as well. The count's about 10 to 1, and that probably will continue up until kickoff. Now, Seattle went to, to Arizona, were have heavily bet, and now people are going against them. Dallas was a dog at the Giants, and the Giants were heavily bet, and they covered. So now people are betting Dallas and staying away from Seattle. That, that looks like a spot where we might do well. I, I don't have a problem if we need Seattle Seahawks on Sunday. But, if, but if, if Dallas covers, then it'll be a big loss. It'll be a big loss for us. And, of course, if the teasers, um, the teaser games, key ones would be Houston, Washington, Baltimore, and New England. Those right. are the big games for us in terms of teasers. Thanks. Great call once again, Brent, and we will talk to you next week.